What's up, what's up? It's the Arthur Most Experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Most, and that's my main man, Deke. What's up, dude? Chilling, baby. How are you? I'm excellent, man. <laughs> Bro, so you got the fresh cut. You were, you were dressed to impress this weekend, man. <laughs> Brought out the, the Sunday attire. I liked it, man. You was clean, bro. Oh, thanks, man. I didn't think so, but I, I'm glad that you took notice. <laughs> Put, pulled up in, in, the, in the, the fresh Lincoln. Uh, <laughs> I said, oh, he's stunting today. He <laughs> pops with My, Mine was just out of gas, so that's oh, why I, I liked had to it, rock though, with his. <laughs> Definitely looked good, bro. And, uh, man. I appreciate that. We had a good time. We that did, was, man. It was, was out blast. there at the Terrible Tailgate. Hinesville, Red Light 5A was still a game. Yeah. It was insane, Definitely bro. lived up to expectations. Without a doubt. <laughs> Footage was crazy. Dropping that later today. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Man, the, was, the reception. What was your favorite part? I mean, I love the fact my family was out there. It was a vibe. It was awesome. I think me doing my first beer bong, though. <laughs> Just because, like, in college, I, was, I don't drink beer. I'm, you, I already tell you this all yeah, the time. Yeah, like, you were, oh, I don't my. like beer, bro. People always give me beer. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't drink beer. I hate beer. But it was only right. It felt dope to be, you know, doing a beer bong out of a custom beer bong with my face on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That which I thought was dope. That yeah. Was really dope. Shout out to my man Kevin for that, you know. What was hilarious because we go into the game and <laughs> the guy in front of us, in the row in front of us, was he recognized you obviously yeah. and he was like, Hey man, let me get you a drink. What do you want? You said Heineken. <laughs> yeah. I, I forget what your other beer I was like, was. It was like Corona, Heineken. <laughs> and he's like, uh, He's like, All right, all right. Or he you. said, like, what, if, what if they don't have it? Right, right. And then he comes back <laughs> and hands you some. Here, man, this was the strongest thing. Hey, bruh. And then, you, then we take, we inspect it. And it's an IPA, and no I'm like you. They're awful. <laughs> I, I hate beer, bro. And I was stuck in it. I was, I was drinking it just because my man bought it for me. Did you finish it? <laughs> Not a chance, bro. I and you know I don't even drink slow. I like to like just get my drink, drink and get it over with. Mm-hmm. Man, I slow sip that drink to about halfway to the halfway point, and I noticed I was like, oh, good. All right, he left. It's fourth quarter. He's not coming back. I just <laughs> casually put it under my chair like, yeah, I'm going to get this later. <laughs> I'm drinking all my kids' uh, Sprite and Dr. Pepper like, yeah. <laughs> and you saw me. I left me when I came back with, the, with a Gatorade in the water. I'm oh, like, yeah. yeah, I'm straight, bro. I, I, need, ain't, I, ain't to, I need to get this taste out of my Yeah, mouth. it was terrible. <laughs> but shout out to my man for giving me the beer, though. It, it was a nice gesture. Oh, it definitely was. But now that I know, because that was my first fan experience, now that I know they do serve wine and liquor, I'm going to just tell... Yeah, that's, my, that's a new thing. Yeah. That's a new thing. So next time, I'm just like, yo, just give me like a vodka cranberry or, or <laughs> you know what I'm saying, a, a, I don't know, rum and coke, get me a jack and coke, give me a white yeah. or, or red wine, like, that's fine, man. You ain't got to... My man, he was proud of that IPA joint. I don't even know the name of it, bro. No, it, it's it's like, it said IPA, strongest. though, in big yeah. letters. That's all you need to know. Well, like, the, the funniest part was, at one point... I forget. It might have been the second quarter. Yeah. You were like, "Hey, man, like I'm, I'm hungry and shit. Like, when, <laughs> when should I go get yeah. this stuff? Like, when's a good time?" And there was like, I forget how much time was left. There was maybe like four or five minutes, yeah. and I was like, "Now's probably a good time because yeah. at halftime, everyone's gonna crazy. be booking it." <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. know that, man. There's, there's little ins and outs to that. It is, and, and man, like. I felt like we were sitting there. We were just in the right section because we had people in front of us and behind us. They were like super engaged. My man behind us is, hey, yo, Mose, man, come on, man, go call up Coach T. I'm like, yo, <laughs> every play he got me. All right, I, I, all right, man. I appreciate the love, though. Major respect. <laughs> yeah, take the, it, it was take wild, the training though, bro. off Mason. Yeah, it was wild, bro. Yeah. Well, there was one thing I wanted to tell you, too, because we were, uh, something was brought up during the game. I can't really remember what it was, uh, but. I only had I only had one beer the whole time yeah. throughout the whole experience through the game, the tailgate, mm. and then at Cosmos. The only reason yeah. I had it was because John got it for us and yeah. it was a Steeler Gang beer. And that's the only reason why I drank the beer because it was Steeler Gang beer. <laughs> I don't even I tell you, I, I, I hate beer. But dude, you know me. Like I, I like to drink. I I mean right. I mentioned that to you before. I made a bet over this weekend. So I got this mm. dilemma with uh this past tailgate and then the one coming up. All right. With my buddy's girlfriend, I'm supposed to lose 20 pounds in two weeks. And that's why you weren't drinking. That's why I wasn't drinking. That's why I didn't I eat. Know. And, look, and the thing <laughs> that got me was this, too. So I remember when we first talked about this tailgate situation, You, I was getting nervous for you because you're like, man, this could get crazy. It's booze. And I'm like, 
I'm thinking myself, like, damn, like, D, you can't control your liquor. Like, what's going on here, man? Like, you drink that much? Like, what's up? Just tell me. And he's like, nah, man. Ah, it's just the booze. And I'm saying, like, bro, he's not even drinking out here. Like, what? <laughs> what is he? he was just all hype. <laughs> but no, that's what happened. So okay. I'm, I'm doing a, I, my opinion, like, my take on it was it's easy. Yeah. Because, like, I, I'm carrying, I'm carrying, like, you can't tell too, too much, but, like, I'm yeah. carrying around probably 20, 25 pounds that I don't need to be. Okay. In my stomach. Gotcha. And, we were out late on, what was it? It was like Friday or Saturday. I think it was Friday night. Yeah. And I'm like, it's so easy. I could be losing all this weight. But I always say that. And then I said, you know what I need? I need a bet. Now, you it's said like, you're going to lose how much in two weeks? 20. Holy 20. Cow, so bro. my strategy is fasting. That doesn't even sound healthy, bro. Fasting. Um, <laughs> oh, keto. Oh, and then God. Oh, doing, doing some form of uh, just physical exercise and then no no drinking, <laughs> just trying to stay away from that. So I, I think it's going to be easy. See, for me, I could drink, but beer is what gets the calorie. That's why I'm always on the liquor. Just give me shots and I'm good to go, man. No, it, exactly. It's the most efficient way of doing it. That's crazy. <laughs> it's going to be interesting uh, next week, too, man. So. Shoot, not only will we be following you to see if you can uh, not <laughs> Dude, drink. I weighed in. At, I'm usually at like 175. I weighed in that Saturday morning at uh, 194. Mm. And it was funny, too, because we, we were drinking that whole night, Friday yeah. night. And we made the bet. And then I we all went to get-go. And I forced myself to get like the most disgusting meal. Oh. And just pa- uh, two donuts, buffalo yeah. chicken sandwich. Loaded tater tots, mac and Jeez. cheese bites. I wanted to get my weight up yeah, yeah. for the weigh-in so I could have a little more. <laughs> I like it, man. He's playing it ahead. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's why I wasn't I wasn't drinking. And honestly, I had a good time. Good. It's just it's funny because like you think like <laughs> you think you think you need the beer, or you think you need the alcohol, the buzz, or whatever. You don't. You can just have a good just time. Just live, man. It. Yeah, exactly. Gotta have a little fun. <laughs> I could dig that. That was man. a blast, though. I appreciate you for no doubt, inviting man. me in the game, and that was a good just time, this whole, man. Yeah, that whole experience it, was awesome. If only the game went better for us, yeah. And if only uh, one very important person was able to stay in that game, it would have been a great. It would have been a great day. You see, well, so you're saying we would have won if he was in still? <laughs> I ain't say that. Remember who who picked two to win that game? <laughs> I yeah, yeah right. I said it. I said twenty eight twenty one. That was my pick. Yeah, it's true. I did not have him winning that game, regardless of if Ben was out there or not. It just so happened that Ben goes down, and then it was like, ah, man. And I, I blame you. Why? Because <laughs> after the game, you was over here joking about Mason's the guy. No, no, Mason no, 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 was no. high. He looked no, good. No. He sparked the <laughs> offense. And then, not even 24 hours after you make that joke, we get the report that Big Ben is out for the season, elbow surgery, and I'm just like, wow, Deeg, really? If really, Mr. 15 and 1, this is what you're going to do to us? If there's anyone that's been following us for a decent Unreal. amount of time knows who was <laughs> joking and saying those things. Man, I couldn't believe you, man. It hurt my heart. <laughs> hurt my heart that you would say that. You think I would flip that quick on Ben after saying, I'm just saying this whole offseason, Ben's the GOAT and I'm just my saying, number one man. QB? <laughs> I'm just saying. But this is where we're at now, man. Big Ben has officially been ruled out for the season. Yeah. I feel like it felt like a bomb went off in Pittsburgh yesterday from anybody living in the city, anybody that understands Steelers, anybody that understands football. We're just in like depression for probably a couple hours yesterday. Yeah. When when the initial shock of it came out, the report. My buddies were texting me like, hey, do you hear the news? Or like, our season yeah. shot. Like, this is awful. Well, it's crazy, man. I texted them back and I was like, dude, I'm lost. Like, I don't I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Bro, it was wild, man. Because Ben being on the team is usually my hope for the team. Like right. even if we were 0 and 2 right now, oh, Ben's yeah. on the as team. As long as seven, are you good? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling we're gonna Absolutely. at least go ten and six somehow or nine and Absolutely. seven sneak in. But now he's not there and like this is what I'm saying. I'm just like so conflicted with all this because yeah. I'm rooting for my Steelers. Right. I want Mason to do well. Right. I want him to kill it. Like I have, I have nothing against him. Ben's my favorite player though from my childhood. <laughs> like so if he so kills so, he, so, <laughs> so if he kills it, is that really would that really be the last hey. I've seen a Ben and the Steelers? I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> 
That is a conflict of interest right there. That's interesting, bro. It is. See, I want I want him to do well. I, yeah. I do. I really do. But like, it's like my my childhood could be stripped away here. It's right, like, right. It's tough. <laughs> and like for me, I look at it this way. Like, like I said, being a former teammate of mine, like sucks seeing him get hurt. Even chatted with him a little bit yesterday when he was at the facility. And he was, you know, obviously down about it and stuff like that. But you're just thinking like, man, there's no way Ben is going out like this. But then the flip side, like you said, if Mason balls out and people are very like this is the thing that gets me too. We'll get into this a little bit later though. Just like the drastic wave of either they believe Mason is the next franchise quarterback or it's the total opposite of the spectrum. Oh, it's over oh, going on sixteen. Yeah. Like there is I feel like there is no in between right now with still that nation. True. So for me, I'm just like all right, if he does perform to this franchise quarterback, and not, and, and it's not even like they look at him as he's going to develop into that. They're saying like, oh, he's there now. So that's why I'm just kind of like, well, if that's the case, then I definitely could see it being interesting next offseason. Yeah, the Espe- offseason and, would be really right. interesting. And I think once we find out exactly what it was that Ben did, if it's just like, was it the, I think it's like the UCL, mm-hmm. that's one thing. But if it's the Tommy John, I mean, the recovery for that is drastically longer. And you got to think, Ben will be 38. He's going to have, what, I think 22 or $25 million that they have to make a decision on in the offseason as well. Yeah. So it's a lot that plays into that thing, man. So I saw something. I don't know if you saw this, mm-hmm. but Chris Morton said called up Jake DeLome, and mm-hmm. he had a similar injury, the UCL, mm-hmm. and he was out for the rest of the season. He yeah. came back, and he told Mort that, his arm felt stronger than ever, yeah. and he for was, the UCL, yeah, not for Tommy John, no, right, right. exactly. And he said, mm-hmm. um, "Yeah, he was throwing it better than ever." Right, and uh, I think they went twelve and four mm-hmm. that next season well, in yeah, Carolina. Yeah. So here's here's what I'm thinking. So there's a reason Ben signed that three year extension. Yeah. Like he must be feeling mm-hmm. pretty good. And I know we didn't look the hottest these first six quarters, but. Yeah. Simply, that's it. It was six quarters. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to think with Ben, too, man. Over the past couple of years, he don't heat up until week four or five. That's when he really starts getting it going. Yeah. But to make you do, to make you feel a little bit better, he did put out a statement saying yeah, that he, yeah, you know I he's committed that. to the team. So mm-hmm. you definitely have that there. But I think it's less about his commitment to the team and more so if Mason comes out here and throws for 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns this year, <laughs> I think <laughs> that decision is different now. Definitely, do. right? I, yeah, I don't know what you would do, right? Because right now we're all under the well, half of us are under the assumption that Mason is going to do good, but just be the clear cut number two, and he will take over at some point in the future and be the guy. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, well, then yeah, Ben's back, he's good to go. But the other half, talking about he's the franchise quarterback right now, if you go out there and throw for those four, four thousand passing our starting touchdowns, 10 picks. Now Colbert is looking over here at Ben like ah, it's like the it's actually very similar to the Dak and yeah, Romo. Yeah, Romo scenario. absolutely. Because I think at the time, like no one would say, no one thought Dak was going to be the guy. No one thought he was going to yeah. be the guy. And I think even at the end of the day, I think people would say Romo was still better than Dak. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, like yeah. they were winning and they had a chemistry, and Dak was playing very good. Yes. But like. The offense wasn't the same where, like, he No, no, no. Was, they weren't winning because of Dak. No. They were winning because Zeke was running the ball great, and their defense was playing lights out that year. And they had the the Russell Wilson method. They were going to run, 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 play action pass to Dez. Mm-hmm. Or they were play action pass hit Witten. That was with the offense they were doing. That's the year they came up here and, and beat us at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I remember that, without a doubt, that was their whole game plan. Though. They knew they had a big O-line that was top in the league. They weren't going to give up a ton of pressure. Mm-hmm. And Dak's job was just don't turn the ball over. Yeah, so I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping for a Ben comeback. I'm hoping Mason does well. I don't. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm yeah. lost. I just don't know what. To do. So this is so <laughs> as we talk about Mason too, man. Why is it so drastic? Like, why is it that either people believe he's just this franchise quarterback ready to go right now, and the other people are believing he's a bust? <laughs> it's not going to work. Like, that's what I want to know. Well, it was funny because we talked about this a little bit after the game yeah. with John from Steeler Gang. Absolutely. <laughs> and he comes up to us, and he's he's not a believer, but what he said might 
be a valid point as to mm-hmm. why people think this way is just he looks the part he looks like he does. almost like tom brady out there yeah. you know pretty boy quarterback mm-hmm. has the has just like that the physique yeah the, the, physique. the moxie of it yeah yeah and how he throws it and he just right. he looks the part so like i could see why people would be yeah. like all right he's the next guy right and then i think the other reason for people thinking we're just going to go like 0-16, oh, I mm. think they were that much of a believer in Ben. Mm. And then they're thinking like the offense is just like not going to look yeah. the same. Like it's going to be like him with training wheels on. Like gotcha. we're going to limit him or like he's going to limit the offense. Like it's just not going to look the same. True. But here's the thing. In preseason, he looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. In this game, he looked pretty good. So. Yeah. I'm leaning more towards optimism. I think okay. that's maybe just naturally how I am with the Steelers. Yeah. But I, I mean, I don't see what's not to like about him thus far right. outside of just his inexperience. So absolutely, that's that's what I'm thinking. Do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, man. Well, I just laugh too when you talk about the defense and, and the game in general. And shout out, we do got some interviews coming up later today too, man. Terrell Edmonds, he mm-hmm. did join us, so big shout out to him. Yep. And we also got to talk that Minka Fitzpatrick trade as well. Absolutely. But man, when I think about Mason and his performance in the second half, I thought he looked good. He looked sharp. Once they took the training wheels off of him, kind of like we joked about in the stands, he was he was hitting the guys. The only interception was Moncrief just dropping the ball. Moncrief mm-hmm. catches it, it's not even a pick. Yeah, that and was his a pass that was rate a big third, crazy. That was a big third down. Absolutely, too. absolutely. But for me. I think Mason is going to do really good, but I don't think him playing good is going to be indicative of the Steelers' record. I don't think they're going to go hand in hand because, personally, I think it's some other issues that the Steelers' team has right now. Yeah, I mean, throughout the first two weeks, they haven't been able to establish any sniff of a running game, like not even close. And then defensively, man, they still been struggling. They, I mean, they they make the trade for Minka Fitzpatrick, and we're gonna get into that, like I said, and that should help that secondary out a lot. But they were still struggling. Yeah. And I thought the D line played really well, creating havoc, pass rush, and things like that. But overall, they still had some issues going on in that back end. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm just looking kind of like, man, you got defensive issues you still got to fix out. Russell Wilson threw for 300 yards still. And they still give up over 100 yards rushing. Yeah, that's the thing. We yeah we got them on some really nice plays with mm-hmm. the sacks and and some stops. Yeah. But then like we also gave up some huge chunks, absolutely, and that was depressing. Yeah. So for me, I'm just kind of like, not only do you lose your franchise quarterback, you're essentially putting in a rookie court. Granted, it's his second year, but he's a rookie in terms of playing time. Mm-hmm. So you're putting him out there, and you're asking him to orchestrate wins in spite of the lack of running game in spite of the inefficiencies on defense if this has been we're talking about we've seen him do it numerous times he's proven himself with mason you couldn't call it optimism but no one has seen him do anything yet in terms of willing this team to win i've seen ben will teams to win i've seen ben take bad defenses and make them look great i've seen ben out there with great defenses when he was struggling Mm mm-hmm we haven't seen any of that with Mason yet, and that's my only concern. And that's, I think, why I take more of a reserved approach in how I view him. I think he can definitely do some really good things, and he definitely has the tools, and he showed that. I think that's why the Steelers traded Josh Dobbs and felt comfortable with Mason being the guy. Yeah. But in terms of am I ready to just crown him and say, oh, this is the franchise quarterback – on what? what? What have we seen to make yeah, you dude, just say that? We and, haven't seen him play like on the road against right. Baltimore, on the road well, Cleveland. Even this one coming up, we're going yeah. cross country at the road 49ers. And they, they're what, 2-0 and o right now? Yeah. Jimmy G looked good last week. And so. the thing, too, on top of that that gets me is this. this is, I guess this is why me and Steeler Nation kind of are at differences right now because <laughs> my issue is this. One, in one breath, they're talking about how Ben is the guy. Franchise quarterback, Hall of Famer. Our season depends solely on him. Ben gets hurt, and they're like, oh, we ain't worried about that. We got Mason Rudolph. He's the <laughs> franchise quarterback. So if, to me, I'm like, okay, well, if Mason was this franchise quarterback this whole time, well, why did they extend Ben then? Right. Because the contract runs the full length of Mason's contract. So you essentially just have this guy just sitting on the roster doing nothing, and then when it's time to negotiate, you think he's going to want to come back? Well, he can go somewhere else. Like, that was my first dilemma. And then my second part, I'm like – well, if Mason is is this great elite talent like y'all saying he is right now, not the potential to develop into, because I had to clarify this when I was talking, like, what do you mean 
Like, Fran, are you saying like two, three years down the line he's going to be the guy? And they're like, no, right now he's ready to go. <laughs> well, if he's right now ready to go, why did they take him in the third round? If, they, if he was that good, why didn't somebody take him in the first or second round? And these are all the questions that I'm having. And then obviously people will say, what about Russell Wilson? What about Dak Prescott? They weren't the guys when they first came in. Dak, like you said, he sat behind Roma until Roma got hurt, but he wasn't the reason why they were winning. He just didn't turn the ball over right. and everything else around him. Same situation with Russell Wilson. They didn't draft Russell to be the starter. Remember, they gave Matt Flynn the contract and Tavares Jackson. Those were the two guys. And then he just happened to be playing better than them, and he got the opportunity. But they had Marshawn Lynch, and they had that crazy Legion of Boom defense over there. And that was the reason why they were winning. Yeah, it's looking like I thought we were going to have a really solid defense. Right. And like the running game. I thought I thought all that would be there. Mm-hmm. So it's not looking too good right now. So that's, right. that's the difference in these situations. That's, yeah, Russell there's so Wilson many other Dak pieces versus. around him that have question marks. They don't even have, like, who's the number two receiver right now? If you, not, not who be, we think it's gonna it should be. be. It's going to be James now. It, that not, we're, saying, we're saying it should be or it's going to be, but who has it been to this point? Right. Who have we seen produce as the number two receiver right now? Even when Mason came in the game, they weren't, th- he was hitting Vance, mm-hmm. and Vance had a huge game, balled out. I think it was seven catches, two touchdowns, like 80 yards or whatever. But outside of Juju, what other receiver was making plays like that? And that's my thing. And that's the, the question has been over the first two weeks. And then from a running standpoint, we still haven't seen them sustain any type of rushing game. I mean, if you take away the, let's see, Mason had the eight-yard scamper for first down, and then Benny still had the one carry for 23 yards on the fourth and one. You take that away, that running game that already looked bad from a statistical standpoint looks even worse. Yeah. And that's my that's the, all the concerns I'm thinking about. I'm like, man, I'm hearing people – you know, still thinking like the expectations are still the same. I'm just like, I don't see it right now until these other things get addressed. Now, of course, that can change once we see how he looks, once you see how the uh, offense evolves around him, how the defense steps up and things like that. But we're talking just like right now. You think there is I'm something concerned. to be said for this change sparking some motivation or newfound energy? I mean, people talking all that. <laughs> We we laugh about it. We always say, man, if you <laughs> if you're looking for ways to, to get motivated, I mean, first it's the money. If the money don't motivate you, now it's like we're winning. Okay, that doesn't motivate you. Oh, it's because we got a, a Ricky or a new guy at quarterback. This is the motivation. <laughs> how many how many times you need to be motivated, man? We got a saying. I guess it's just that uh, you've seen it with like Tebow. You know what I mean? Like just but did a, you a new but, face? But, but but did you though? Or was it the Tebow situation? The quarterback was playing bad out there. And he just came in and was doing something different. That defense was still balling out. Mm-hmm. Demarius Thomas was still Demarius Thomas. That's all I'm saying. Like I feel like people try to make that bigger than what it really is. Got you. And they're like, oh, yeah, man, they rally around. This guy playing so much. They're inspired. I'm like, bro, they just, if you look at the film in most of these situations, oh, instead of them making mistakes here, now they're sharpening up here. Instead of them losing this one-on-one here, they're winning that one-on-one. But it wasn't because... Oh, I just felt this extra magic <laughs> juice. It just helped me play so much better. I'm like, man, if that's the case, I'd have been a Hall of Famer. You know how much adversity? I'd have been through a couple quarterback changes in Buffalo, man. We're gonna rally around this guy. We rallying around him. Absolutely. All right. And you know what happened? We rallied around him. We lost 14 zip with two pick sixes. Didn't give up a touchdown. Two pick sixes. That's how we lost. We rallied though, man. That's all I'm saying, bro. It's crazy, hey, hey, man. It's funny. I'm just saying, like, for me, and I think, too, here in Pittsburgh, oh, think about over the past, what, 14 years now with Ben, they haven't had to experience what it's like without the franchise quarterback. You see right. what I mean? For more than four games, maybe? Right. So, for me, my view is different because in Buffalo, throughout those four years, we never had a franchise quarterback. We went through a ton of quarterbacks. And I've seen the direct correlation it has on the team, on the offense, on the defense. Because if the offense can't sustain drives, defense stays out there too long, that good defense becomes a bad defense, or that great defense becomes a good defense because the amount of time they're on the field, they get tired. It's a trickle-down effect. It circles around. So now I'm like, they're so used to having been here. They don't understand what it's really like to search for a quarterback. I've seen we've had we had a stretch after Bradshaw the Steelers. I wasn't really right. alive, but, but that's it what was I'm saying. Like, it was awful. It was right. dismal. Apparently. But but for this generation of Steelers fans, the social media era, they only know bit. You see what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like 
they think these Hall of Fame or franchise quarterbacks just grow on trees. They don't. So even when you're talking about the potential of a Mason Rudolph, I'm like, man, I was in Buffalo where we had Trent Edwards, who was a first round pick. I was in Buffalo where we cut Fitz, uh, we cut Trent Edwards, made Ryan Fitzpatrick the starting quarterback, gave him sixty million. Then after that, we cut Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then we draft. Uh, let's see, who was it? Manuel. E- EJ Manuel, sixteenth overall. Then I saw midway through the season where he gets hurt. We bring in Thad Lewis. Then from Thad Lewis, we go to Jeff Tool. I'm like. I've been it. I've heard this story so many times where it's, oh, yeah, this is the guy right here. Look at what he does. He looks good. He came in. He played well off the bench. I know the team wasn't prepared for him, but he looked good. And then the hype train starts. And it goes and it goes. And then you look up and you're like, bro, this ain't it. And that's all I'm saying. Like, I, I just caution people to don't put these, oh, Mason's the franchise quarterback right now. Don't put that on him because I'm telling you, they don't just grow on trees. And, and it's difficult, man. Yeah. It's a very difficult situation. I'm with you on this because for with Ben being out of it now, I'm able to take a more objective like look at things. No, 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 no. You still 15 and 1. <laughs> Listen, what, what did you tell me? Because we had a bet this weekend as well. In New Orleans Saints, I had them versus the Rams. I picked the Saints. Drew Brees breaks his thumb. What did you tell me? Hey man, it's an injury. Oh well, the the bet's still going. I bet it on on the Warriors with Golden State and Clay Thompson got hurt. Oh well, so oh well, Ben got hurt. Oh well, I still want to see fifteen and one or the closest thing to fifteen and one. Oh well, yeah. All right, no excuses, man. You're right, no excuses. Hey, the standard's the standard. That's what they say, right? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. I still think it could be an interesting slash like fun season though. I think it will too. I don't think it's gonna be like Miami where it's just bad football tank job. I don't think it's like that. And I still think they find a way to get seven, eight, even nine wins. I just don't know if I don't think this team is a playoff team right now based off what we've seen. Like if this defense steps up and starts playing a lot better, well, now it's a different conversation. Mm-hmm. If James Washington or whoever emerges as a legit bona fide number two, okay, cool. If James Conner gets back to the Pro Bowl form that we saw from him last year, all right, cool. But until I see all those things transpire, I mean, shoot, even with Ben, I'm looking those first two weeks like, yo, it's going to be a struggle for them to get to these 10, 11 games the way they're playing. So now you're telling me you're going to take away this productivity, this proven commodity, and we're going with a guy that you're either optimist about because you're a Steelers fan or you don't believe in him at all because you believe that this team is Ben and Ben only. So for me, I'm just kind of like, it's looking a little rough right now, man. <laughs> it is, bro. But shout out to Kevin Cobra, man. He's still willing and dealing, man. He's no, still exactly. making moves, bro. 100%. Like, I, I, wanna, I just want to say this. Yeah. yeah. If any, anyone that is um, ready to turn the franchise over, be careful. Be careful what you wish for, like you're saying. Like, yeah. Just... Cause once ben, that, ben was the man. He like don't right. don't take him for granted. And if and, and that's the thing, I think some people do, and it's a coping mechanism. Like if Ben's healthy, nobody is talking about Mason Rudolph as oh he's the franchise quarterback right now. We, but I'll, be, I'll say this too. Yeah, I mean we were up ten seven with Ben there, and like yeah. if he doesn't get hurt, and mm-hmm. who knows how the offense flows exactly. And like. And he, we and, won, and when you look at the film, he was starting to do better in that second quarter. Oh wait, you did that now? <laughs> I believed it. I said that you were the one who was talking about, yo, Ben looked terrible like that. I never said that, bro. But the thing is, it was like he was starting to play better. But that's my biggest thing right now. I feel like if Ben was healthy, no one is talking about Mason as the franchise guy right now. They're saying we still got Ben for the next three years. That's our Super Bowl window. It was none of this, oh, Mace is the guy. He's ready to go. Why are we holding him back? Because if y'all had these same type of feelings for him, like you said, it makes no sense for the Steelers to even have extended Ben this offseason if that was the case. But that's not the case. And that's why I'm like, don't just – and it's the coping mechanism I was talking about. Don't let the injury situation – and because you are trying to find that hope or something to comfort yourself and rally around – don't put that in Mason and saying that he's the franchise guy right now. Can he grow and develop into that down the line? Sure. And I hope he does. But we I'm just don't know yet. That's for this season, it's so much unknown about him. 
I don't care who you are. You can't sit here with, with and this I ask people. When, when we talk about Ben, I say, yeah, I would bet my house two years ago. Two years ago, I, I bet the house. Ben's the guy. Ben's the franchise quarterback. Ben's a Hall of Fame quarterback, period. You know why? Because I've seen it. You ask all these people right here that's talking about they believe in Mason. He's the franchise quarterback. Ask them, hey, man, what you willing to put on it? <laughs> what you, like, like, seriously, if you're that confident in it, what would you be willing to bet on Mason if he, right if, now? Like, what would the bet be, too? It'd be like if he's. Stuck around for four or five years mm. with the Steelers, right? He, is, is he gonna be the is he a franchise quarterback right now, or in two years, or in three years? Like we don't know. But as of today, what would you be willing to bet on that? Would you bet your house on it? Would you bet your savings on it? Would you bet your four hundred one k on it? I would not. Nah, you know why? Because you don't know. But everybody's talking like he is. Well, not everybody. Half the people are talking like <laughs> he is. The other half are talking like he's the worst thing ever. I, like I said, I'm in the middle. I feel like he has a, a ton of potential. I think he's gonna do really good. But I'm not ready to put that franchise crown on because, yeah, you don't just hand that out. I've seen good quarterbacks. I've seen not so good quarterbacks in my day, and every one of them were getting crowned. They have one game. They look hot. They throw, throw a couple touchdowns. Oh yeah, he's the savior. He's the guy. And then yeah, I'm just hoping we got a few more years of Ben. That's all with the Steelers. Hey, it's gonna be interesting. But speaking of that, man, mm-hmm. Kevin Colbert made the big trade last night for uh. Minka Fitzpatrick out of Miami. I know you were extremely hype about that trade. <laughs> well, <laughs> but just to hit on that a little bit though, if Kevin is thinking the way that you're thinking in terms of him having a couple years left, is that why he makes the trade? Because he's saying that hey, we're not worried about picking early this round this year because we're gonna have success and Ben's gonna come back next year and we got us a window. Almost like yeah, so you gotta look at it that way. Like, say we do Say we even do worse than expected and right. go like five and eleven or something mm-hmm. like that, and we give up like a decently high pick. Five and eleven pick you picking top ten, top eight. That that is showing the faith yeah. in Big Ben there because that would be uh, so five and eleven. Maybe you're assuming Mason hasn't really shown you enough to be the franchise quarterback. Okay, so you'd be looking at a quarterback at that spot potentially, right? If Ben is not healthy. If Ben's not healthy, you look to take a quarterback. No, but this is what I'm 10. saying. This yeah. is what I'm saying in terms right, of right. like, all right, then you're just saying, pushing that aside and saying right. this guy is worth that right. top 10 pick. We're ready to roll back with Ben, mm-hmm. uh, improve the defense a little bit. So, yeah, yeah I guess that's a that's a yeah. pretty good point there. Yeah, and so for the people that might not have been aware of the trade, so the Steelers last night traded their – Next year, 2020 first round pick, 2020 fifth round pick, and their 2021 sixth round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick, safety from the Miami Dolphins. They got him. They got a fourth round pick from the 20, for the 2020 draft and then a seventh round pick for the 2021 draft. And the funny thing is this, man. <laughs> it was one of those shock moves where you either love the trade, you get people talking about it's the best move ever. It's going to instantly upgrade the defense. We're back in this thing. We believe in Mason 100%. Or you get the total opposite end of the spectrum where they're like, oh, this is a dumb Reach. decision. You're reaching. How does he upgrade the defense that much? Does he help in any way, shape, or form in terms of wins this season? And you potentially are giving up a top 10, top 5 pick, which if you're getting a top 10, top 5 pick, that means you don't believe in the Steelers team or Mason Rudolph. And then some people are like, oh, that's how you could take your franchise quarterback at that top four or top five pick, depending on how bad they go. So now I'm like, man, which one is it? Either you believe in Mason or you don't. Because there's no way you can be picking in the top five if you believe in the Mason. Like, I just don't see how those two things correlate, man. But, yeah, I think, like like we were just saying, though, I mean, it, I think it could be viewed as much of a short-term play as a long-term yeah. play because, like you were saying, like, we got him under contract for the next three years. For the next three yeah. years, and if we're that, I guess hopeful that you know Ben's coming back, he's healthy. Yeah. Then we, I mean, that's fine. He was already a first round, pick. right? Eleventh overall, the eleventh overall pick, Out and we we kind of need defensive help anyway. So yeah, I mean, here's here's my thing with it, and I was asking you this whenever the rumors first started coming right. around with the. Uh, I, I sent you that screenshot, mm-hmm. and I said, "What do you, like? What do you think of this?" And mm-hmm. you're like, "What? I can't remember what you said." Yeah. So initially, I was saying like, "I don't really see." Oh yeah, it would it would take away the development of right. the safeties. Absolutely. So 
I did my my typical fan mm-hmm. thing. I was mentioning this to you earlier yes. whenever uh-huh. we were first recording the podcast. I just went to Madden because like I don't right. get to see this guy play at all. Right, right. And to see the ratings and stuff. They yeah. had him ra- rated at seventy nine, uh-huh. which is the I think I have written down here the twenty second ranked strong mm-hmm. safety. So. I don't know how to look at this then. Like, do you right. think that's an accurate assessment of him right now? I think it is. I mean, you got to realize this. And, and now that we're on the trade talk, we could talk about this a lot more because this is another lightning rod where they either are crowning him like he's the next Rod Woodson <laughs> or they're saying it was a reach. I, and that's what I'm realizing. Like, when I look from the fan perspective now, there is no <laughs> in-between ground. There is no, hey, maybe he can be really good. It's either he's a Hall of Famer or he's a bust. Right. I mean, I saw people saying Troy Edmonds was a bust. And I'm like, dude, he's played a season in two games right now. And this kid has done the same thing, a season <laughs> in two games. And I'm just like, y'all ready to cry him to be Rob Woodson? Like, whoa. <laughs> like, hey. And then I'm looking, I'm like, okay, he has a ton of position flexibility. So initially I was thinking, all right, are you bringing him in to play strong safety? Because typically you got you got to think with Troy Edmonds and Sean Davis, they both have been interchanging between free and strong. That was the thing that the defense was hyped about because they both are rangy guys. Mink is very rangy as well. But when I looked at the Miami film, he plays a lot of slot, nickel corner and stuff like that, plays in the box. And he does a great job in terms of courage because he played corner at Alabama. So that's more of his background. But the reports out of Miami were that he was tired of switching positions, playing linebacker, safety, corner, nickel, and all that. So I'm just trying to figure out, all right, if you're bringing him in to play safety, obviously Terrell Evans is your first-round pick from last year. You're not taking him off the field. Mm -hmm. But Sean Davis isn't a bad player. Like He's a guy who, okay, if – Let's be real. He could have signed an extension with the Steelers. He instead wanted to bet on himself to get a bigger contract through the offseason, through free agency, or whether the Steelers want to re-sign him and stuff like that. So clearly the team believes in him to an extent. So I'm like, all right, are you going to take Sean Davis out the lineup to put Minka in? Or I saw how much he played nickel. But then I'm like, you got Mike Hilton. Now, granted, Minka is, I feel like, a a better athlete, Mm -hmm. has more size, more range than Mike Hilton. But I'm like, y'all believe in Mike Hilton too. And it's not like Mike Hilton's not playing good ball. So that's what I'm just trying to figure out at which position is he going to be in at. Yeah, because it's funny. You just said he doesn't like switching all these positions. Right. But like, it feels like that's what we would use him for. Absolutely. Because of how successful, like how good he is. Yeah. Well, here was my thoughts because we kind of saw this in the Patriots game and then even in the Mm -hmm. Seattle game. Like, it doesn't look like Mark Barron can cover well, some of these like, quick we're dudes out to. the backfield yeah. and in the slot. Like mm-hmm. This dude probably can. Right. But this is the thing. So I started thinking about that, too, because I'm like, well, Vince Williams has the hamstring issue. You know he's going to miss some time with that or be in and out of the lineup. Obviously, Devin Bush didn't have the best games in terms of covering tight ends. And I'm thinking about that. But then if you're Minka – do you want to play box linebacker? Because that's what Mark Barron is. Mark Barron isn't a safety. He's a linebacker on this team. He takes on guards, fullbacks. Is that really what Mika wants to do? So for me, I'm just like, uh, I don't know where he's going to, like how you implement this guy. But that's the position flexibility that he has. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, okay, you can use the different packages, dime packages, stuff like that. Have him out there as the, the sub football linebacker. But then he goes right back to the situation that he was doing in Miami where he's playing some sub ball of this. He's playing over here in the slot here. He's playing in the safety here. And I thought that was some of the things that he said he didn't want to do. So for me, that's why I'm just kind of like I'm taking the wait and see approach. Like without a doubt, he's a talent. Without a doubt, he definitely helps the defense. I mean, you can never have enough talent like that. But it's just going to be interesting to see what – ways they implement him what ways they utilize his assets because he's very talented but if you don't use him the right way then it's kind of like all right well you gave up a first round pick for this guy and then i like the fact that <laughs> that's the next thing we think about these draft the draft pick that they gave up i see some people already talking well man they were gonna use that pick to get a safety anyways or a db <laughs> and they don't even draft dbs good i'm like <laughs> who said they were gonna take a db you're you're Talking about they were going to replace Sean Davis when they could have easily extended Sean Davis, which a lot of people were still talking about that potentially happening. 
and more so concerned about drafting a pass rusher because they were assuming that Bud would leave through free agency. So that's what I'm just kind of like, man, y'all fans. I hate, I, I, I love fans, but sometimes <laughs> fans like they just be coming up with this stuff. I was like, man, it was no like foregone conclusion that they were gonna just draft a DB and Cobra <laughs> can't draft DBs. Like, what? Stop that. <laughs> So what do you think? What does General Moats, General Manager Moats say about the trade? Was it a reach, or do you think it was mm. proper compensation? Put it like this. Proper compensation, yes, because he was 11th overall pick. He's extremely talented. And I do think that Mason is going to be good, and I still think that Ben will come back and ball out next year. My thing is I think it was more overkill, though. Because, granted, these secondary guys haven't been playing to the standard that we thought they would play right out the gate. Mm -hmm. But what did we just talk about a month ago before the season started? That first month of football is typically bad ball because guys haven't been out there. Guys got to get used to playing in the games. Guys got to get into their groove. And guys typically start out one way, but they grow and develop and get way better towards the middle part and the end part of the season. So I feel like this was more of a knee-jerk reaction to, all right, Ben's down. We need to bring something in to just at least make this defense that much better because we're going to have to lean on them a lot more. Minka's available. Let's get him. And that's kind of how I looked at it. Well, here's what I'm wondering, though. Mm-hmm. Colbert doesn't typically think that way, right? But think about this. When the last time Colbert traded up in the draft for a top 10 pick? When's the last time Colbert made a splash for agency signing? Everyone's doing Everything it. he's – no, everything that – but we talk about Colbert specifically. Colbert doesn't do any of that. Cobra made splash for agency signings, gave Steven Nelson the biggest for agency contract under his tenure. He moves up in the draft, takes the 10th overall pick in Devin Bush, never does that. Then he trades with a first round pick for a player, never does that. No. So that's what I'm like for Cobra. Like, I don't put anything under, under oh, what's he thinking right now? Because he's very uncharacteristic this year. It's almost like <laughs> he's on social media, it's just to what the fans <laughs> want. Fans, they get this guy. All right, trade that. Trade for hey, that guy. Cool. If that's the case, he's got to be looking at Ramsey right now too. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> but and, and that's my thing. Where people were like, "Get Ramsey next." And I'm just kind of like, "But wouldn't that be the same situation? You're gonna have like a surplus of talent in these rooms and not enough positions." Like, okay, you got Joe hated. You just paid Stephen Nelson all this money. Then you bring in Jalen Ramsey. How many? Uh, <laughs> well, you're assuming that Ramsey is just a one year rental, then though. Okay, but either way. Where are you putting him at this year? He's he's a talent, man. I'd, so 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 you the guy you just gave the the biggest free agency contract to. You're gonna take him <laughs> off the field, put Jalen yeah. Ramsey in. Okay, cool. I would. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's fine. But now we're looking at how you're wasting the cap. That's cool. Okay, so then next is what you got Minka Fitzpatrick, and are we gonna use him in the slot role? Because nah, he's been we'll, playing some slot. He's been doing a lot of man on tight ends. Anytime it's the bunch, he's usually the point guy. He's very like to get hands on the guys. We'll roll with. Uh, We'll roll with Minka and Edmonds as safeties. We'll put Nelson in the slot. Okay. Makes and now sense. you got Sean Davis, who you were thinking about extending this off season, just sitting on the bench there? I guess. I guess someone's got to take a seat with, Man. with Ramsey so, coming in. So now you're just paying. So Sean Davis is getting, what, a couple million as a second-round pick last year to deal. He's just sitting. Okay. Just for this year, though. Because we'll, we'll well, then Ram- he's going to leave. But then, but then no, no, you got to think. So Sean Davis, this is contract year. So is he going to re-sign after you just took him out for Mika? Nah. So now you're going to lose – Sean Davis, we you got, lose Jalen Ramsey, and now you, and also we you're have, gonna we have, lose. We have wait, wait, under wait, 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 wait! But now you lose Mike Hilton, who is your solidified nickel corner the past couple of years because he's under contract year as well. He's and if you take off. him off the field, he's pissed. He's already mad because they didn't extend him, and that's why he didn't want to sign his tender. And then I had talked to him about that as well. He was like, "Man, I'm just gonna show up, do what I got to do, so I can get the so I can get the uh, the contract, get the extension." I'm like, "You doing it the right way?" That's what I told him. I was like, "Yo, you doing it the right way by showing up." By working. Like, we've seen the dudes who hold out. It don't end well most of the time. So, you're smart. But these are all the moving pieces. So, even right now, if you're Mike Hilton and you see them bringing in Mika, you're asking yourself, okay, is Mika here to play my spot? Is he here to play Sean Davis' spot? Both of us are in contract years. So, one of us is going to be unhappy. One of us is going to leave through phrases. So, right now, this trade maybe causes a little bit of calamity. In the locker room, but then they 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 won't ver- they won't publicly say that. But then bringing but in Ramsey would be taken to the next level. Oh, yeah, because now you got to think. You instead of losing 
Think about this, right? So with bringing Minka in, you're essentially going to lose one of those guys, right, through free agency, whether it's uh, Mike Hilton or Sean Davis, because you're assuming he's going to predominantly play one of those positions or a mix of both of those positions. So whoever he takes snaps from, that guy is going to be the guy that's like, yo, bump this, I'm leaving through the market, or they might even request a trade, because that's like the end thing to do now is request trades. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I did want to right. ask you about that. I mean, since we are on, you want yeah. to finish with it? Yeah, saying? I'm going to finish real quick. So so that's the thing. So with Minka right now, you're losing one player. But if you bring in a Jalen Ramsey, now you're essentially going to be losing three players because Jalen's on a one-year deal. But then the trickle-down effect for Mike Kilton, he will be gone. And then Sean Davis, he was going to be gone. So that's three players that you would have on this defense that you're leaving scot-free, not getting nothing in return for. It. And that's not even account for what you would have to give up for Jalen because they said they want at least a first-round pick. Yeah. So there's two things I wanted to, yeah. to ask you. My eyes are telling me that mm-hmm. the corners actually aren't playing that bad this year. I, I think they're playing pretty mm-hmm. solid. It's more they, the, no, no, no. This game they play solid. First okay. game they struggled. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I, I guess <laughs> I guess we could just toss everything out the window for the Patriots game. But <laughs> but this is my thing though. Why are, why do people make these like blanket statements of like the secondary looks so bad? I'm like, bro, they had one game where they looked terrible, one game where they looked decent. Mm-hmm. And then it's just kind of like, all right, how do you weigh that? And then with the linebackers, it's like they looked way better this game compared to last game. The D line looked amazing this game. They were non existent the first game. Yeah. So that's my thing. I'm like, it's two games we're talking about. It's not really a and sample size. Thing. I wrote down, I think it was like three things that, or three or four things. Like, if it would have went our way, we would have won the game. Absolutely. Like the, the whole field goal debacle. Yeah. Um, the, the bullshit pass interference call. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end, like we, I mean, we were in the game, like we had them on the ropes, like Absolutely. third and long Wilson just escapes and gets like a 20 yard game for, Absolutely. you know what I mean? So like there was just things throughout the game. Like if it just would have went our way, we could have had the win. So I, yeah, I, I don't think there's, it, it <laughs> might be, like you said, it, it might've been a re-jerk, uh, knee jerk reaction yeah. getting Fitzpatrick and probably would be with Ramsey. Cause I don't, I think there's definitely some hope. With, yeah. with the defense going forward. Well, I think all this does prove that uh, Cobra believes in uh, Young Mason. <laughs> You're not making these type of moves if you don't think Mason can still get you in contention this year. Like, he clearly believes that they're still in the fight. And I like that. It's going to be interesting, regardless it, of if they win that's or what not. I mean. It's, it's going to be, be a fun year. It's going to be a fun year. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. And then even like the off season is going to be interesting too. Like all of this stuff. Absolutely. Um. So real quick before we go to the Terrell Edmonds in, yeah. uh, interview, do you want to touch on this whole trade request thing that's going on? Yeah. Go ahead. Absolutely. So what do you think of it? <laughs> I don't have an issue with it. I see some people they don't like it. They feel like oh guys are quitting. In particular, I look at the situation with Minka in Miami. And I look at oh, what's the other guy that's down there? Uh um Xavier uh Howard. Mm-hmm. And people are talking about, man, y'all are quitting, man, ask and be traded. Like, when did that become cool to always want to get traded if things don't go your way? I'm like, first off, it's a business. Secondly, what player wants to be a part of a tank job on a professional level? It's different when it gets to this level because it's ramifications that are going to affect those players, especially in contract years, a lot more than it affects a coach's staff or a general manager who decides that we're going to tank this year and go pick up somebody else. When they're looking at the stats, when they're looking at how this team looks on paper, that negatively affects this person when it, t- when it comes to Money. hitting the market. We talked about Steven Nelson, right? And some people were like, oh, love the pick, love you paying him. And others were like, man, he was on the worst defense in the league. You see right there? That's the type of stuff that affects your money. Now, imagine if he was on the Ravens defense last year. Oh, they'd be like, man, you got to pay him more because he was a part of something special. He was part of a top two, number one, arguably, defense, uh, number one ranked defense last year. So you want to pay him even more because of that. But when you're on a job, on a team where they tank and they giving up 50, 60 points, come on, man. They, they, them boys didn't give up 100 points in two games. How that's going to help you in free agency when they look at your numbers and they like <laughs> – Oh, you only had two picks? Ooh, y'all gave it how many points? Ooh, even if it won't show four. Still, that's bad ball. So that's why I'm like, I can understand that. And then with Jalen Ramsey, he clashed in heads with uh, Doug Marone. And I had Doug Marone as a coach. It doesn't surprise me. Like, he's, I say he's an acquired taste. You either have to buy into what he's saying 
and not really clash with him, just fall in line. Or if you're Jalen Ramsey, who's very vocal and is going to speak up for himself and things like that, then you could definitely see the clash. And that's what happened with them. They had a conversation on the sideline. But if you're Jalen, they didn't want to give you the extension that you wanted this offseason. So essentially, you're on a one-year deal. They're not having the most successful season right now. They obviously just lost their quarterback, Nick Foles. And I don't care what you say about the two backups, even with my boy Josh Dobbs on there, you still have to be feeling like, man, this is going to be rough. And the rougher it gets, the worse it's going to look for me when it comes to getting this money through free agency because it's a business. True. And it was all the things I think about. So I'm like, I don't want to just put it like the onus is on the players. Like, no, the onus got to be on the organization to make sure you got quality talent around these players to make them feel like we have a chance to win. If you were part of a company that told you, hey, man, we're planning on sucking this year. We're planning (laughs) on being the worst company ever this year, okay? We'll be good in like two, three years, though, cool? You don't want to be a part of that. Ain't no, oh, it's a weak generation. None of that, bro. You don't want to be a part of the losing culture. You don't want to be a part of people committing to losing. That's what they're doing, committing to losing. They're saying, hey, look, we're planning on losing right now, bro. Don't trip. Nah, bro. Work too hard to get here to want to be a part of that. Like, if you're telling me, man, we're trying to turn this thing around right now, oh, we're in there. That's a totally different mindset. But you're not going to tell me, man, we planning on being bad this year. I'm trading away all the good people. I'm getting draft picks, bro. We're going to be all right. Nah. <laughs> Say that, bro. <laughs> Miss me with that one. Oh, it, I mean, it makes complete sense. And especially if there's there's a difference between, like, I guess these two guys right. that have a market for them. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, you have maybe the backup or maybe a more marginal guy mm-hmm. saying, I want to get out of here. Like, nah, we ain't, you know, we ain't getting anything right. for you. So, like, what I don't. Or, you know, they'll just cut you even. Right. Like, and you could go figure something out yourself. Right. Like. I think it. I think it makes complete sense if you just put it on like a, like a human level. Like, mm-hmm. if you were doing this as your job, wouldn't you want you to be doing be a, the best thing for you, right? right? And you would want to be a part of an organization that's trying to do the best thing as a whole, not hey, we're we're planning to we're we're, we're going to intentionally be bad this year, all right? <laughs> just trust us, nah, bro. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm all the way straight on that, man. So, do you think this will be more of a trend? Uh, if teams start tanking like Miami is, absolutely. You see it in the NBA? When them dudes start tanking, them dudes be like, yo, I'm going to holler at y'all, man. Or you see all them deals structured. I got the player option. So if y'all do decide to tank, I can take my talent somewhere else. I don't know what the backlash is then because when someone is requesting Mm -hmm. a trade, it's just transparency. Like, listen, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. You could get this for me. Come on now. As opposed to me just staying in here. and like Now, now, you talking about you don't understand the backlash. You know exactly what the backlash (laughs) is. Come on now. This is the team. You're supposed to do it for the team. I'm a dog. I've been a Steelers fan for 30 years. But they're getting these first round picks and like building for the future. Like Dolphins Dolphins are stacked. How many times have we seen Cleveland with all these first round picks? How many times have you seen teams with tons of draft picks that don't pan out? And that's the thing we always tell people like, the draft is a crapshoot, bro. You hope you get a guy that comes in and produces, but it's so much that goes into it. It's so much. It's, it's, yeah. it's no exact science that, oh, this is a surefire guy. You can't miss on him. Man, everybody in that draft 90% of the time has something that's a flaw, has something that you're like, ah, I don't know. But here's the thing. I don't get why it's Miami and Jacksonville that's mm-hmm. pissed off. Like, obviously, we had this happen with AB in the right. offseason. season. One, we didn't get good compensation for AB. We got you what? Don't a, think we got good compensation after everything that's happened now? No, no, no. no, no what I'm, I'm saying is <laughs> Antonio Brown, like he's worth at least the first round yeah. pick, maybe even more. Well, I don't think so. But like, hold on, just yeah. just talent wise, just talent okay. wise. So, but you have to factor in age. True. Yeah. True. But at least the first round pick, though. Come on. <laughs> I, like I say, we we you operate in the. We're gonna dis. We're not gonna think about anything else of how he got to wanting to trade. That's not how it works. If he was just asked for a trade and it was week six of last year, okay, cool, first round pick. We don't know anything. The way he got to getting the trade, the way he got to requesting the trade, man, no team is gonna really be wanting to touch no, that. No, no, That's right. That's what I'm but, saying. But yeah. Hold on. But this is what I'm saying. This is why I guess the Steelers, like the, the fans, the team are yeah. a little more upset with how he left. And mm-hmm. like one, like I'm saying, we didn't necessarily get the best thing right. coming back. But these guys, uh, Minka and then Jalen Ramsey, mm-hmm. completely different organizations. Too. Right. Steelers, like 
our hopes are Super Bowl every year. Yeah. And like we've proven that we're always in the mix. Absolutely. Miami's ass. Jacksonville's True. been ass. So like I don't get what Even these, though both those teams have been in the playoffs over the past four years. Did anyone actually think well I'm right, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey. Time out, time out. The Jacksonville one I will give you that because that was actually okay. like a pretty solid team, and they okay. had the Patriots on the road. But that was one. That was one time. There's not like this. We're saying over the past. Of, we're just saying over the past couple of years. That's all I was saying. Like yeah. in the recent future. Uh, yeah, there was one time though. Okay, and that was like it seemed like an outlier to me. And I think okay. just how their record has been, it's okay. kind of like an outlier because that defense was something mm-hmm. different and. You know yeah. they they did they had the Patriots on the ropes there, yeah. but then Miami's just p- consistently eight and eight, nine and seven. So, it's but the they whole, did beat us that one year to get into the playoffs, the year where we beat them in the wild card. Uh, yeah, dude, but I'm just throwing is, it out there. Man. I'm, I'm just, I got you. I got you. This is what I'm saying. Right, let's go. As, as let's a fan, go. Like, yeah. you, you saw it with the Sixers. Like, do you want to constantly be the five, six, seven seed in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and then just you know you're gonna lose. You know LeBron's gonna be okay. you. Or one of these top Eastern Conference teams are gonna be mm-hmm. you, or would you rather? Get rid of the players you have and try to get these assets to so, build a team like OKC did in the past with like KD and, and Russ Westbrook. But they built – they OKC situation was different in terms of the Philly situation. OKC wasn't trying to tank. They weren't good. They just weren't good. They didn't have players. Then they drafted KD. Then they drafted Westbrook. Then they drafted Harden. With the Sixers, they intentionally were tanking. And where has it gotten them? Do are they so much better? Because you talk about you want to be the fifth and sixth seeds, you want to win, and all this other stuff. But realistically, when we look at Philly, dude, they were one shot away. One shot away from what? What was going it? Was to it, going to the Eastern Conference was Finals? That the, was that the exactly. semis to the Eastern? Yeah. So they went, they haven't even been to an Eastern Conference Finals since all this tanking and drafting and all this stuff. So I'm like, did it really make them that? Did it really help so much more? They're in the exact same place they were. They just got they sell more they sell more tickets now. That's it because they got, they hey, you, you'll go there to wear the jersey. But at the end of the day, they got some bigger name players. Yeah, okay, cool. But they that. still leave. They still losing in what the second round of the playoffs. <laughs> they would they could have done that without taking. <laughs> but like, hold on. Let's just say I guess we'll see what happens in the NBA season. Right. But like, they have like assets though. Like, okay, the team. So you're that saying they that they now. can start trading players away again and they reset the because that's what they're they, talking about now. If they should, they re, to, should they hit the reset button? If they got to, if it if it doesn't look too good by the end of this season, you might have to. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and what player really wants to go a part of that? No, again? exactly. But no, this is what I'm saying. It makes yeah. sense on both sides. Right. Like the teams, like you know, I think we got to reset. The player doesn't want to be there, so like right. I don't get what the whole complaining is. It doesn't seem like it's coming from the players or team. It's just it's, the fans. It's the fans. Fans believe that the players have to be loyal 100% to the organization is that this is college or if this is high school. They forget the business element and that's directly associated with professionals, the business element. And until they get that, and most of the time they never will just because of their passion for it and they don't have that understanding of it. They view it as it's strictly a game. Right. So I think that's why. But it's all good. <laughs> it is what it is. I ain't tripping. Nah, bro. Life's good. Life's Absolutely, good. man. <laughs> but yeah, so I think we got everything covered oh, yeah. here and, and we got we got my man terrell Edmonds, yeah starting safety for the pittsburgh steelers dropped joined some, us man dropped some gems in the interview he did man yep. he joined us this is uh we recorded this what end of last week end of last week man so definitely hope y'all enjoy it man it's gonna be dope and uh yeah definitely appreciate y'all i guess we can't really close it out here because nah because Edmonds got to hop on i man. think i said peace at the end of the Edmonds. well there, there we go there so after the Edmonds interview drop just imagine deke saying peace all right <laughs> but definitely appreciate y'all tuning in so here's the Edmonds interview right here all right man now on the podcast we have second year nfl veteran starting safety for the pittsburgh steelers former first round draft pick of the 2018 draft 28th overall selection terrell Edmonds. what's up man how are you doing doing good man thank you for having me Nah, man we definitely appreciate you taking some time out man know how it is in the season a lot of preparation all that good stuff man but yeah it definitely means a lot to us man so uh let's get into this thing now when we're looking at the start of the season it obviously hasn't went the way you guys wanted to go but what are some of the things you've been able to learn from these experiences i mean that is just really a long season uh of course everyone saw the first game it wasn't in our favor it wasn't the outcome that we wanted but at the same time we know that it's still a lot a lot of season left so we're still coming out working every day working hard demanding that that uh, team camaraderie type atmosphere and we just want to attack it this week i definitely could dig that man and 
lot of people talk about that sophomore year, that sophomore leap. So for you, going into year two, what are some of the things that you're trying to accomplish this season from a personal goal standpoint? I really just limit my mistakes. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, as a rookie, man, you, you don't really know what to expect. So you're just out there, you plan. Uh, you plan not as fast. You're just out there making the plays that come to you. Now this year is just a, a year to go out, make more plays, uh, make less mental errors, and just go out there and play your game, really. Uh, everyone makes mistakes every game, but uh, if you limit them, that just help you out in the long run. And, man, you're talking about, you know, limiting those mistakes. So would you say the biggest difference for year two for you compared to your rookie season would be that it has slowed down for you from a on-field standpoint mentally? Yeah, I'd definitely say that. I definitely got smarter in the game. Uh, learning how to be that NFL athlete, you can say, uh, becoming that, that pro athlete, uh, it's, a, it's a jump. It's not a huge jump, but it's, it's definitely a jump from college because uh, you must with grown men, you could say. And yeah, guys true. have been in the league for 10 plus, 10 plus years and you just got to learn how they learn how they move. Terrell Deke here. So I was peeping some of your social media accounts and I saw for last year you got some of those off-white cleats custom made. Those things were pretty sick. How did that come about? Yeah. And did you wear them? Yeah, I wore I wore a pair against uh against New England this past week. Had the all white ones on, all white ones. Clean. I got out, of, Clean. Uh, out of Charlotte, man. I had to have a flag with it, man. I had to have a flag with it. So how, I had how, the drip out there on the field and how'd that come about? Good. I really just got here, hit me up actually that I want any uh cleats made from the season. And then we were just brainstorming ideas, and I, I like off white already, so ah, I, I tossed him that. I showed him the shoe that I wanted, and then from there he just made it. Oh, the now I saw on the off whites you have the Bible verse Philippians four thirteen, and I can see throughout some of your social media accounts that you God's a big part of your life. Has there been a point just through your career, your life, where you've been down and you know you didn't think you could get back up? And God, or you know, a higher power has got you through it. Is there like a moment that comes to mind? Uh, a moment that comes to mind. It wouldn't be in my NFL career. It would definitely be college because um, my junior year of college, right before I declared for the uh, the league, I tore my labrum in my shoulder, and it was a rough time. You know, nobody likes missing any games. Nobody likes not being able to practice, especially if you're a competitor. And then it was just like. I, I felt I was in a sunken place at, I wouldn't say a sunken place, but I, I just needed some more help from other than my family. And I was just calling on God every night. And um, he definitely uplifted me. And, you know, everything else worked out in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Man, First round pay, deep, man. <laughs> Absolutely. And I can tell you too, man, part of my career, faith was a huge aspect of it, man. Having somebody to believe in and just understanding you could call on his name whenever you need him, you know. So definitely respect that element. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, with your father being a, a former Pro Bowl NFL tight end, both of your brothers in the NFL as well, man, just talk about what's it like being a part of such a talented family? Man, it's competitive. Every day, <laughs> talking about something. Yeah, we talk about something. We trying to do something, trying to see who can do this, do that. Uh, definitely competitive, but it brings the best out of everyone. Mm, uh, absolutely. So, you know, you always got someone that's going through, this, going through similar things as you, so you, you can't. It's pretty much like you can't slack up because you know that. Well, who are you to to let them down? Because you know they're not going to let you down. Mm, absolutely, and I mean, shoot, think about you a part of history, man. With you and your brother Tremaine being first round draft picks in the same draft, man, that was insane. I know that feeling had to be crazy, right? That's what I'm saying. I was hyped. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy, man. It was amazing. Now, is there anything from your dad or even maybe coming on to the Steelers? Has maybe Coach Tomlin been a father figure to you or maybe another player where they have given you some type of advice, whether it's, you know, on the field or just life advice in, in general? Uh, really, uh, really all of them. Uh, Coach Tomlin, my dad, uh, other teammates, they all say similar things, but, you know, everyone has their own little twist to it. Uh, but really my dad, he just told me that, it's a long season. Like everyone knows, it's a long season. You're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs. But nobody's going to remember. Like when I tell the story, no, I'm never going to tell my bad plays. I'm only going to remember my good plays. Mm-hmm. So as long as you, if your good outweighs your bad, then you'll be good in the long run. 
Man, that's a wise man right there. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, that. I'm telling you, you never heard anybody ever come up and tell you about their uh, athletic career and told you that they missed 100 jump shots. Hey, you right. They, they dropped 100 fast. <laughs> That's definitely the truth, man. It's real. I like that. I'm going to definitely take that with me as well, man. <laughs> so uh, just hitting a little bit more, man, about this family, man, about your family in particular. Obviously, your, your brother Trey is on the Steelers practice squad with you, man. So just talk about what's it like having your brother as a teammate? Uh, man, it's a blessing. Uh, it was a blessing being drafted with my younger brother now, being able to play with my older brother. That's even more of a blessing. All my dreams came true, you could say. Because uh, everyone probably want to play with their brother at the highest level that, right. that it is. And, uh, you know, we get to compete every day. He plays running back, so I get to tag him off some days, try to strip him <laughs> some days. He's trying to juke me. So, you know, it's still that competitive atmosphere, and we're still going at it. I like that, man. So, I mean, if y'all had to go one-on-one, you got him, right? <laughs> Come on, now. I got you. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I got to hold it down. I like it. All right, Terrell, so this is a little bit aside from football here. I saw you with a Rockets cap online. Me and Moats like NBA. I know it's the off season and everything, but did anyone tell you you're wearing the wrong cap? <laughs> nah, nah, look. I, I'm not a Rockets fan. I got the hat. I got the hat. Well, why are LeBron you wearing James it then? Fans, wherever you go. LeBron James, wherever you go. Okay, hey, you, you good on this podcast. Believe that, man. Team Bron, always, any day, every day is all good. <laughs> why Why the cap Everywhere. then? That's me. <laughs> you said, why I'm, the... I'm Team Braun. Yeah, but why Why the cap then? Why the cap? You know, I like the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I really don't have an excuse. I'm not trying to make myself. I'm not trying to make myself. I'm not trying to make Hey, look good. That's all that matters, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, hey, yeah, that's good. If that's, that's, if that's the reason, I'm good with that. I like it. Hey, it so, looks good. So, look, we got one last question for you, man, before we let you get up out of here. So, uh... Every player has their welcome to the NFL moment, man. So talk about your welcome to the NFL moment for you. My welcome to the NFL moment, uh, I'm going to have to say the first game. Mm. Uh, we had a tie last year. Yeah, Cleveland. Against the Browns. Absolutely. Yeah, that was, a, that was like crazy because in college I went to, I think it was either four or five overtimes again. <laughs> was it? Was it Duke? Oh, I man. said I went to like four or five overtimes. I think it was either against Duke or UNC. And we were going back to back to back to back. And then we did it here, and I was like, okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're out the stadium now. So it was like my welcome to the NFL moment. Something, something different. I like that, man. That's tight. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, we definitely appreciate you taking some time, man, to hop on the podcast with us, man. Wish you nothing but the best throughout the rest of the season as well, man. Yeah, bro, for sure. Thank you. No, no, no doubt, doubt about it. All right, man. Peace. All right, man.